Spanish captions are available for this broadcast as a special service of NET. For Spanish captions, change the closed caption settings to Service 2 on your TV. Nebraska's home for championship sports is live from Morrison Stadium in Omaha, Nebraska in a terrific evening for Class A soccer in the 2018 NSAA Girls Soccer Championships. We have the third seed, the Mustangs of Miller Door, taking on the top seed and number one ranked Crusaders of Marion. And hello again, everyone. I'm Larry Putney along with Marion McCrary. Great to have you with us. Ryan Mix will be joining us momentarily. Marion, we have Millard North and Marion and a state championship in girls soccer. This sounds familiar, huh? It does. There's, they've been in 20 out of 30 state titles between these, or they've earned 20 out of 30 state right. titles between these two schools. Marion looks, though, to cap a repeat, and with Delaney Gunn and her 21 goals this season, Coach DeGeorge feels very confident in their chances. However, Millard North and the Mustangs, they started three freshmen on Saturday in their semifinal. Coach Abweg is looking for juniors Reagan Zimmer and Kelly Elwell to be a dual threat in the attacking side of the game. Millard North and Mary, and obviously both in the Omaha area, very familiar with each other. This is the third consecutive year they will play each other in a state final. This is how they got here. Millard North knocked off North Platte two zip and then rivalry game with Millard West. They won that two zip and Marion had to survive overtime against the very game Lincoln Southwest squad to make it here into this class A final. It should be a good one tonight. Marion the defending champ, two time defending champ and Millard North got a bit of chip on their shoulder. We'll have the championship when we come back. Next time on Backyard Farmer, we'll see some spectacular spring blooming trees that are native to Nebraska. You know spring is here when you see these hardy trees put on a show. We'll also hear some tips keeping your yard equipment from doing some unintentional damage. All that in your gardening questions answered. Be sure to watch Backyard Farmer Thursdays at 7 Central, 6 Mountain, right here on NET. Watch NET Sports anytime, anywhere. Download the free NET Nebraska app today. Watch live streaming of the NSAA High School Championships, college player profiles, full-length episodes from Big Red Wrap-Up, and so much more. The NET Nebraska app makes it easier than ever to follow the NET Sports you want, when and where you want it. Get the app at netnebraska.org slash apps. NET Sports brings you all the action from the NSAA Boys State High School Soccer Championships Tuesday, May 15th, live from Creighton University in Omaha. Class B begins at 5 p.m. Central with Class A starting at 7.30 p.m. Central on NET. A live webcast will be available at netnebraska.org and on the NET Nebraska app. My name is uh, Dan O'Neill. I am an NET Foundation board member from North Platte, Nebraska from the western edge of the state to Lincoln or Omaha is a long way. So state wrestling, state basketball, volleyball, all those events, that truly I think brings the state together because there's just a lot of people that, that wouldn't be able to attend those events. Join me in supporting NET, Nebraska's PBS and NPR stations. Spanish captions are available for this broadcast as a special service of NET. For Spanish captions, change the closed caption settings to Service 2 on your TV. 
Welcome back to Morrison Stadium in Omaha. We're all set for the Class A Girls State Championship, and we could not have a better matchup. It's Omaha, Marion, and Millard North, two perennial powers in Class A. Omaha, Marion has 14 state championships in its school history, while Millard North has six for the Mustangs. And these two teams are very familiar with each other. Omaha Marion has won 13 of their last 14 games at the state tournament and on the other side Millard North this is their ninth state championship appearance in the last 13 years the Mustangs are a relatively young team only have four seniors and six freshmen that are contributors we'll see how the Mustangs handle the big stage we are all set for player introductions and for that let's go to our PA announcer Ray Quinn. And now let's meet the players and coaches for the, the visiting Mustangs from Millard North. Double zero, Sydney Anderson. Number one, Raga Desari. Number three, Marin Ellis. Number five, Moya Murray. Number six, Julia Dooley. Number seven, Campbell Zimmers. Number eight, Morgan Mickelney. Number nine, Reagan Zimmers. Number 10, Riley McHugh. Number 11, Jordan Marino. Number 12, Kelly Elwood. Number 13, Aaron Morrissey. Number 14, Senna Abahefaza. Number 15, Jocelyn Anderson. Number 16, Caitlin Beberness. Number 19, Delaney Grant. Number 21, Eber Leverich. Number 22, Laney Kuhn. Number 23, Caitlin Thiele. And number 24, Emerson Henry. The Mustangs are coached by head coach James Abui. He's assisted by Aaron Harding, Leah Lawler, and Bob Brandreth. And now for the home team, the Omaha Marion Crusaders. Number zero, Abby Vaughn. Number double zero, Hannah Schaefer. Number one, Lily Gonzalez. Number two, Kajai Anderson. Number three, Megan Valenzuela. Number four, Kira Bravo. Number five, Mia McGrath. Number six, Laurel Edwards. Number seven, Patty Kleiber. Number nine, Delaney Stecker. Number 10, Jaden Johnson. Number 11, CC Hacker. Number 12, Mo Tolley. Number 13, Catherine Pelton. Number 14, Delaney Gunn. Number 15, Mia Suter. Number 16, Alexis Christensen. Number 17, Molly Saren. Number 19, Mallory Mumby. Number 20, Grace Thede. Number 22, Grace Crockett. And number 23, Liv Van Bell. The Crusaders are coached by head coach, Teresa DeGeorge. Assisted by Monica Vasa Helvick, Haley Shelton, Max Lesson, and Carrie Pippabar. 
Your officials for tonight's game are referee Jeff Barton, assisted by Tim Hook and Tim Ramsdale. Well, the pregame handshakes commence as Marion and Millard North get ready to battle for the third consecutive year here in these state finals at Morrison. Here on the campus of Creighton University, we've got a great, I mean, 72 degrees. Does it get better than that? Just a slight breeze and the humidity, not a problem at all. You know, you can watch NET Sports coverage of the 2018 NSAA Soccer Championships on your smartphone or your tablet. You can take NET Sports on go anytime, anywhere, just search for NET Nebraska in the App Store or download it free at netnebraska.org slash apps. Well, Marion, the favorite here, 18 and two on the year. They beat Millard North earlier this year, four to two. But if you're looking for motivation, maybe a little more want to, that might be the team wearing the Miller North jerseys tonight. Yeah, I always think it's hard to beat a team twice, no. especially in the same season. Marion's really gonna have to have to really bring a game tonight. I mean, Miller North is a very strong team. They've done a lot of great things, just even in these playoffs. And I don't think they're gonna give anything easy to Marion tonight. There is Sydney Anderson starting in goalie for the Mustangs of Millard North. She's just a freshman, started 17 games, allowed 10 goals, over 100 saves on the year. She's a good one back there for the Mustangs. She is. She's tall, strong, athletic, and she's got the mental fortitude as a freshman to come in and have a great season with her team. Uh, it's a tough position to play at this level, and she's done a great job. I expect great things from her tonight. Underway here, taken away by the Crusaders. Immediate opportunity upfield as Laurel Edwards takes it in. Edwards will cross. Kicked out of there and cleared by the Mustangs. Yeah, I don't expect Marion to, to start slow. They're, they're gonna get off to a fast start. That's how that's the way they like to roll. Did you say that's the way they roll? That's the way they roll. Huh. No pun intended. Right? <laughs> Delaney Gunn is the leading scorer for these Crusaders. She has 21 on the year. Had a hat trick earlier in these state championships. In fact, that was in the semifinal win against Lincoln Southwest. Had a hat trick despite that going into two overtimes. She had two goals in overtimes that went into overtime. Two over three came in the overtime. She's a force to be reckoned with. I mean, she knows how to find the goal. She wants to find the goal, and she's going to work hard to, to get the ball and also get in position to score those goals. By the way, you saw Sydney Anderson there, the freshman for Miller North. Previous goal was Abby Vaughn from the Crusaders. Apologize for the mix-up. Marion's got a very experienced squad. They're going to be tough for Miller North to handle with that, with that young squad, but... Willard North is athletic, and they're hungry. They're hungry to win. There's an opportunity for Miller North. A header could not get the ball controlled, and Aaron Morrissey. I don't think she realized how much time she had. She had tons of space and time. She could have taken that ball down to her feet and placed a shot into the corner. She's going to look back on that later and, and really wish she could do that again. One more look at it. it was Kelly Elwood, the junior forward. I think she was really surprised to find herself that wide open. She may have been in an offside position. I didn't get a chance to check out the linesman, um, and maybe that's why she was surprised that she didn't get called. That's where you really need to rely on your teammates to, to let you know, hey, you've got time. Oh, yeah, I mean, look at this. Here's yep. this offside line right here. She's clearly offside. And uh, 
kind of surprised that uh, we didn't get anything from the from the referee on that. So the throw-in upcoming for the Crusaders. It'll be thrown in by Delaney Stecker. Stecker, a University of Minnesota soccer recruit. She will study political science next year. She has five goals on the year. Sends that one in. And handled by Abby Vaughn. You know, you, you talk about Minnesota. Marion's got seven players going to play Division One soccer wow. in, next year. Yeah, in the fall, so only a few months away. Sent it in there and kicked away by the Mustangs. That was Reagan Simmers, who leads the Mustangs in scoring with 17 on the year. It's a balanced Millard North attack. 17 goals for Zimmers. 16 for Elwood. You know, it's always great to have that one great goal scorer, but when you have a dual threat like that, teams cannot defensively just focus on that one goal scorer. So that dual threat becomes so explosive, so dangerous, and you really have to have a really balanced defense to handle that. 24 saves on the year for Abby Vaughn. Against five allowed. Pretty great environment here tonight. You can hear the crowds. The, the students at Marion really support their soccer team. Or I'm assuming they're all from Marion. Coach DeGeorge <laughs> said that they would be out here in force tonight. Teresa DeGeorge, the head coach of the Crusaders in her third year. I like that, you're in your third year and you've won two state championships. Going for your third, yeah. There is coach Teresa DeGeorge who played at Marion back in 89 through 92. In fact, she won a state championship in 89 and 90, a runner up in 91 and 92. And then she played here at Creighton. She did, that's right. In fact, she had a hat trick the day after her 21st birthday in playing for Creighton back in 94. That's fantastic. Great player in her day. Great coach now. Looks like she can play a little still. She can. <laughs> I don't imagine she was intense. Yeah, I think we figured out that we actually played, we crossed over in college and played one year against each other. Is that right? Yeah, she's, she's a solid player. Like that, who's, who's been a part of state championships, played at the Division One level. I mean, what a what a great mix, what a great combination of a coach to have somebody like that to lead this program. And yet, so humble. If you talk to her, she'll give credit to her assistant coaches. She'll give credit to her players and how talented they are. But I think a lot of the credit should go back to her for what she's been able to do in a short period of time. Nicely controlled there by Riley McHugh to keep it alive. Here is Marin Ellis. Good job defensively by Grace Thede. Here is Grace, the junior forward. Seven goals on the season for Thede. You know, this is just the type of environment that you just, you don't expect to see this in, yeah. in girls' soccer, women's soccer, you know, but this crowd is buzzing tonight. I love it. This is a physical battle. I mean, these these ladies are really they're going in hard on tackles. They're trying to win these these balls. There are lots of shoulder to shoulder contact. I'm really happy to see the referee letting letting some of this this physical play happen because this is part of the game. Great job back to the feet to keep it alive. The effort there by Reagan Simmers back to Simmers now. Megan Valenzuela. Brought up by Thede, loses control. Megan Valenzuela headed to Duke. I mean, not Duke, I saw, I'm sorry, Drake. Closer to home. 
Not yet. You're right. Two and a half versus 24. Yeah. Hours. Yeah. She'll do great things for them at Drake. She certainly has the GPA to go to Drake. 4.2 GPA. Yeah. I think we could go up and down the lineup on both of these spots. And see 30 plus ACTs and 4.0s. Oh, yeah. And we have a valedictorian on the field. These are some smart ladies in addition to being fantastic athletes. Ball in there by Liv Van Bell. That's going to get called every time. A little push in the back there. They're going to let physical play happen, but little fouls like that are not going to fly. Simmers with a kick. A little too far handled by Vaughn. So far, we're seeing quite a midfield battle. Um, we're not we're not generating too much offense in either of the attacking thirds, but a lot of uh, a lot of good soccer being played right through the middle of the field right now. Battle in the stands as intense as it is on the field. Yes, it between is. Between Miller North and Marion, two schools who <laughs> bring great fan support. We saw it there just a moment ago. This is part of the culture of, of soccer in this country, and it's great to yeah. see it see it building like this. Vaughn clears that out. Handled by Delaney Gunn. Now drop back to Motali. Motali will carry it up. Has it taken away. So the throw in now coming up for the Crusaders. I mean, we could really just listen to the students chanting and enjoy the game. <laughs> They're doing our job for us tonight. You know, our producer Brock Lore has told me many times he would like to experiment with just silent announcers when I'm doing games. I'm not sure what he means by that, but we could experiment this evening. Sanaa Havisi sends that in and cleared out. Sana, just a freshman, I believe, right? Doing some great, doing some great things, trying to get in behind the defense over there on the wing. Coming up from the back line to do that. This is kind of the uh, the new style of play in, in soccer in the last in the last uh, maybe in the last decade. So maybe it's not too new, but getting those outside backs involved in the attack is kind of kind of become a, a prevalent style of play and. It's so dangerous because those outside backs do not get picked up typically, and it, and it creates an overload for the defense to have to deal with. So do you look for a different type of player in an outside back than you might have five or 10 years ago? Absolutely, you want, you want defenders who are attacking minded, who have the speed to get involved in the attack, but also the endurance where after the attack is over, they can hustle back and get into defensive shape. Shot on goal, Sydney Anderson there, the freshman. The other thing that's changed significantly, especially on the girls, the women's side, is just the athleticism is so much greater. Sure, the game is faster. I mean, every every pass has more power on it. Shots are coming from farther out. I would totally agree with that. Into the game now for the Crusaders comes Patty Cliver. 
along with Kajai Anderson. Patty Cliver headed to Oral Roberts University in the fall. And here's a chance. Oh, I thought she was going to get a chance to, to go at the defender there. Good job by Lady Kuhn there to stand her ground. Yes, great stuff. So she, she, if she takes a better touch here, I think she gets a chance to, to really get the move that she wants to get around that player. Unfortunately, it kind of bounced off her hip the wrong way. She was trying to do the right thing and run through that ball, but sometimes it just bounces wrong. Kuhn with free kick. Nice ball control there by the Crusaders and Laurel Edwards. Throw in upcoming for the Mustangs. Marin Ellis now to throw it in. Good ball ahead. It will be chased down by Kelly Elwood. Crusaders are the two-time defending champs. They're looking for their sixth state title in nine years. It's been a remarkable run for this Crusader team. And as you said off the top, Marin, between these two teams, they have won a combined 20 state girls soccer championships. The rest of Class A has won 10. That's, that's a pretty shocking statistic when you really think about it. And, and I believe Millard North has been in all 30 state playoffs. All but one. All this is the 31st, yeah. Th that's okay, that's right. 30 out of 31 state playoffs. Yeah, it's remarkable. You're starting to look at dynasties when you when you're talking about these two these two programs. The only time that Millard North did not make it to the state championships was 2002. It's the only year they missed. There's coach James Abweg. A break from the Philippines. He says, many times my nationality is confused for Hispanic or Latino. He said, I'm, I'm Filipino. I said, we'll, we'll clear that up. Yeah, there you go. He's proud of his heritage. We've also got Native American heritage in, in Molly Saran. That's right. And there was another player that was adopted from the Ukraine. Mom and dad adopted her at two years old and thought that she was paralyzed when they first got her because she just hadn't walked much. Here she is playing in the state final tonight. Yeah, a great crowd on hand for both Millard North and Marion. of substitutions early in this game we're 15 15 20 minutes in and seeing some substitutions I, I think I would guess that the coaches are looking to get some refreshed legs out there but also maybe change up the attack a little bit like I said a lot of midfield play happening we want to start seeing some of those penetrating passes going into the attacking third and, and really creating, creating some chances Nice work there by Patty Cliver to get back to her feet, control the ball. And good work here by Kajai Anderson, the sophomore for the Crusaders. Ball ahead will be run down by Delaney Grant. Yeah, Kajai really stuck with it there, kept going, kept fighting for it. Really great effort. Send it across. Chance here in the box, Kajai, and cleared out. That's a great cross. She put it into the mix, right, right where her, her players could have a chance to do something with it. Just couldn't quite get connected this time. Good footwork. Stay there. Stay there. 
Good up-tempo battle here in Class A between Millard North and Marion. Who's going to have the first opportunity? Well, it's a real defensive battle right now. Defense on both sides is, is holding up very well, staying nice and compact. We're going to take a look at this cross that's coming in. And uh, what I like about this, she does an early cross, doesn't take it to the end line, but go ahead, goes ahead and puts it into the mix early, giving her, her players a chance to, to kind of connect with that. But I'll tell you what, the Millard North defenders, they, their hips, the way they kept their hips open to the field and not facing their own goal made that easier to defend. Battle going on there between Grace Thede and Sina Ahovisi. Back into the game for the Crusaders is Mo Tolly. Tolly coming in for Alexis Christensen. So they just moved Sina Ahovisi over to the left back and um, with this substitute. It'll be interesting to see how she how she stays involved on the offensive side. And, uh, nope, never mind. They did not move her. Cleared out. tough defense right here just throwing their bodies out sticking their leg out anything to to disrupt the, the play of that ball let's look at Jaden Johnson the senior midfielder she's going to play next year at Texas A&M Corpus Christi you mentioned her earlier she was adopted from Ukraine when she was two years old two years old her parents actually at the time when she came from Ukraine thought that she was paralyzed We have no score here in Omaha in the Class A title game between the Crusaders and the Mustangs. We'll be back in just a moment. Since 1981, Food Bank for the Heartland has been working to feed hungry people in Nebraska and Western Iowa, providing nutritious meals through local food pantries, the backpack program, outreach efforts, and more. You can help the food bank feed children and families in your own community by making a contribution or volunteering. After all, the best support is locally sourced. More info can be found at foodbankheartland.org. Have you ever wondered what happens to soybeans after they're harvested? Every year, soybean farmers invest a portion of their soybean revenue to fund research, marketing, and promotion, which is called the Nebraska Soybean Checkoff. 80% of the harvested soybeans are crushed into soybean meal that's used to feed poultry and livestock. The other 20% is made into soybean oil that's used for cooking oil and biodiesel. To learn more about the Nebraska Soybean Checkoff, nebraskasoybeans.org. Coverage of the 2018 NSAA Girls Soccer Championships on NET is made possible in part by Education Quest, Nebraska Methodist College, Nebraska Public Power District and Nebraska Soybean Board. A big thank you to all of our sponsors who help us bring you the best high school athletes from across the state. We could not do it without your support. From the campus of Creighton University, Morrison Stadium, just a beautiful facility for soccer here in Omaha. Lucky enough to have the Nebraska School Activities Association Girls State Championships held here tonight. Elkhorn won the Class B title earlier tonight. This is the Class A battle between Marion and Millard North. And don't forget, back here tomorrow night on NET as we bring you the boys' A and B championships as well. Good one here in Class A. No score here halfway through. Top seed, number one ranked Crusaders of Marion. Number two seed, number two ranked Mustangs of Millard North.
Anderson pulls it in. You know, I really like Sydney Anderson back there in goal. She looks very athletic, but as a freshman, she does look a little nervous to me tonight. So we'll see if that her body language is kind of showing some nerves and we'll see if that has any factor later in the game. It's easy to talk about the offensive powerhouses that both of these teams have, but I think so far in this game, the defense has really been a little bit of key. That's a great shot. A goal just high. Our first real dangerous chance of the night. She got a great look. I liked her setup touch. Great hit. Let's look at this again. Ball pops out. She gets a great setup touch and moves it right around that defender. Oh, I don't know if Sydney may have gotten a finger on it or not, but that was a that was a very good shot. shot great on, chance. Shot on goal by Elwood, who's attending Missouri Western State to play soccer, study dentistry. Both her mom and dad were Miller North students. High school sweethearts, weren't they? Go again, Anderson knocks it down. Check that, that was both tall to get that last shot. My mistake. And I like how she's dribbling in here, taking players on, getting into the box. And it's 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 not easy, it's not pretty, but you just gotta find a way to get those shots off. Patty Cliver with it. Now we're starting to see Marion's offense kind of pick up a little bit. We'll have to see how the Millard North defenders respond to this. Looks like we've got an offside call. Yeah, and you can kind of see the, the, the Marion player, Delaney Gunn, she starts from an offside position, and when you come back for that ball, if you make a play for it, they're going to they're gonna call you offside. Handball belongs to the Crusaders. And this is one thing I think that's going to play an impact is Marion has such a deep roster. Their bench, they can they bring players in off the bench that can that can continue to play at the high level. Miller North might might struggle a little bit more in trying to have that depth respond to it. Free kick up coming for the Mustangs. Good ball played into the middle, but Marion, Marion's making been Valenzuela handles that just fine. Megan's one of those defenders that loves to use her head and very strong in the air. That's the type of uh, defender a lot of Division I coaches are looking for. Good clear. Cliver now with it. Great clearance immediately go into their transition, and Marion is very dangerous here. James is, Johnson sends it across. They'd like to get numbers up into the into the attack right away, see if they can create a counterattack. Tolly dumped it. Definitely see some of that more and more physical play coming out. The referee's going to start making more of these calls to try to get things to simmer down. Grace Crockett, just a little grab. A little bit of wrestling going on there. And, <laughs> Trying to know. pick up two for the takedown. Shows a hunger. They're, they're, they're ready, they're hungry to play, they want to win that ball. 
sent right on goal. And Abby Vaughn scoops it up. Up the free kick. I like what she does there. She sends a ball in with a little bit of a skip. It makes it very difficult for the goalkeeper to handle those balls. So you're not necessarily, maybe not looking to score off of it, but maybe the goalkeeper deflects it and somebody else cleans it up and puts it in. Aaron Morrissey stepped in front of that, sent it ahead. Not catch up to it. Sena Javis. So watch how the ball's gonna skip right about here. And the goalkeeper's gonna have to come up to it. It, it almost hits her in the knees, and uh, those can be very difficult for the goalkeeper to handle. Unless you're Abby Vaughn. Abby Vaughn, no problems. Yeah. She made it look easy. It's much more difficult than she made it look. She's a young goalkeeper as well, only a, only a sophomore. Good hustle back there by Caitlin Thiele. morning that, that she really felt the key to the game would be winning the first and second ball. You're seeing here there's a lot of balls in the air and uh, Marion's trying to get to those balls and, and, and really have a factor in it. A lot of times it's very easy for players to sit back, watch the other team receive the ball and then try to defend them. But as Coach DeGeorge knows, if you can win that ball first, get to it, be the one to start it, then uh, you're going to have better chances in the overall flow of the game. Boy, Sydney Anderson's got a great goal kick, almost to midfield. Spanish captions are available for this broadcast as a special service of NET for Spanish back, 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 captions. Back, back, back. Change the closed caption settings to service two on your TV. We're doing that today and tomorrow for both days of these state high school soccer championships. We've got the boys Class A and Class B championships right back here at Morrison Stadium at 5 and 7.30 once again. Oh, I like this build up for Marion. Let's see if they can get a chance here. Patty Cliver had it, now off to Mo Tolley. Here's Tolley. Good pass in, looked for Cliver, had her for a moment, couldn't get the touch. The defensive battle out here is just Fantastic defensive play. This is not, I mean, they're, they're looking to, to make these penetrating passes, trying to get these opportunities right in front of the goal, which is great, but the defense makes these recovery runs, gets their numbers behind the ball, so they're facing forward, and it's much easier to clear the ball out. Good ball ahead. Here's Campbell Simmers. Simmers crosses. And an opportunity still alive. Fired and in. Just inside the post. The Mustangs are on the board. Well, we thought that all that this was a defensive battle, but what a finish that was. Zimmer starts this. What a great timing on her run to stay on side, stay until the ball was played. She cuts the ball back at an angle, which is really difficult for defenders to handle. And then Senna right here. Great shot. Freshman with a goal in the state championship game. 
Cena Havisi with the goal for the Mustangs, and they're on top. One zip, nearly 30 minutes into this Class A state championship. Fourth goal of the year for Cena. And she was out there playing the left wing. And right after she scores, they drop her back into the into the right back position. So she's already been in two different positions in this game. Obviously a good move to move her up to the left wing, have her in position to finish that goal. And just like we saw how that goal was scored, I think that's going to be a key to the game where you on a big field like this, with defenses that want to stay nice and compact, you have to get out to the width, stretch that defense out, cross it back in, and you're going to create havoc and opportunities in, in the goal box. And that's really where you're going to be the most dangerous. Cena Havisi still can't stop smiling. I don't blame her. That's exciting. <laughs> by the Mustangs. Controlled, here's Mo Tala. Hands it off to Gunn. You know, Larry, one of the hardest things to do is to stay composed when you have those chances right in front of the goal. And uh, for a freshman, great composure, lots of pressure all over her, finds a way to find that corner and, and tuck it in. And just inside that left post. Mm -hmm. We'll see if this opens up the game at all. I mean, both of these defenses have stayed nice and compact. And they they want to move together as a, as a unit. Sometimes when there's a goal scored, it kind of maybe one team gets a little excited and starts getting a little bit out of shape. You know, different things can happen, but we'll see how disciplined they can stay. Stecker controls it, hands it off to Christensen, back to Stecker. to find gun taken away there's another chance for Miller North with a long shot Ooh. I don't think Abby was expecting that long of a shot she looked like she uh, was a little late diving over on that very lucky that it wasn't on frame I don't mind this I mean sometimes you can catch a goalkeeper off guard and she really ripped that one she did get Chipped a hand it away, on yeah. it. Yeah, so. Might have found a, might have found a post it in. You never know. Abby's got her work cut out for her tonight. Here's the corner. And that's the other thing that happens when a goal is scored. Everybody's confidence kind of rises a bit. And there we go, Santa. Another, another long shot. But that confidence level level rises. And now you're willing to tr kind of try some things that maybe you were a little too timid to try early on. some young players really having an impact in this game and you know we've got young goalkeepers we've got we've got freshmen who, who scored early on or, you know in the first half and it's pretty exciting to see up and coming players mixed in with older experienced players and that's the fun of high school soccer Fantastic shot. 
great release and the great save. Kind of a little bit lucky save, but you know you'll take it. Back the other way, Ben with it. And this is one thing that Marion is really going to need. They need to find Delaney Gunn's feet more often. And here's a great cut, quick release. Oh, yep, yeah, and that, that actually hit the crossbar and then Abby Vaughn. I like that hit, though. She's already celebrating. She thought that was going in. I, I, I probably would have, too. Great hit. Wow. Well done. What a shot by Elwood. What I love is she makes a move and takes a quick shot. You know, these young players today can really watch that and learn a lot from that. You don't have to have a perfect setup to get a good shot off. Inside five minutes to go here. Anderson gathers that in. Defensive battles are great to see from a coaching point of view because you know great that, that coaching has taken place and when, when there's great defenders on the field. But definitely spectators like a lot of action, lots of shots. And I think we're just going to continue to see more of that tonight. Sydney Anderson playing a little bit of a game with Delaney, making a run all the way up before she was going to pick up that ball. attending Missouri Western State we mentioned earlier. Kelly Elwood is really creating a lot of havoc right now for this Marion defense. She keeps driving in, drawing drawing defenders to her. Things are happening. I mean, she's really at the, at the, at the root of this offensive attack right now. She's one of them we talked about. Dual threat with, with uh, she and Reagan Zimmers. But uh, really, really pleased with Elwood right now. She's getting involved on many parts of the field. She'll study dentistry at Missouri Western State. I mentioned both of her parents went to Millard North as well. 16 goals in the season. Coming out of the game for the Crusaders is Laurel Edwards. another chance. I'm actually surprised that Marion seems to be kind of fumbling some of these, their defensive line seems to be fumbling some of these, some of these relatively easy looking balls and, and Miller North is creating chances just taking advantage of that opportunity. I don't know if they're, if they're frazzled or just a little bit off the game this is good untypical for, for the Marion defense. There's another, there's another yep. example. She'll hustle it after. Anderson sends it away. Simmers will take it up the right side. Now 
the throw in coming from the Mustangs. This is kind of what I talked about earlier. This is where you want to start the attack is out here on the wing, stretch that defensive line out, and maybe open up some opportunities in the middle. She didn't quite get the cross there that she wanted, but she's got the right idea, and that's what she's going to keep looking for. Now Delaney Gunn on the dribble. An opportunity here with inside 10 seconds to go, and they can't get a shot. That is how we will end the first half of play. A big goal for the Mustangs at Millard North that they will try to make stand by the freshman. Sena Ahavisi. Great stretch there yeah. to stop that ball. I mean, that's the kind of effort you're going to need from Millard North to, if they're going to hold on to this win. I love it. Reagan Zimmers, great stuff. Let's get out of the field with Ryan Mix. All right, thanks, Larry. Join here with Miller North head coach James O'Bleg. Coach, obviously huge for you guys to get on the board first. Your first two games at State, they were all second half goals. So what's that mean to strike first? Uh, it's good, but it makes me worry about their mindset right now. I want to make sure that we don't go back on our heels. Uh, we got to keep attacking Marion because they're putting up a great fight right now. So, Ahovasi, as a freshman, to get that goal, how awesome is that for her? Oh, that's pretty spectacular. Like I've said before, when you get a goal and the fresh as a freshman on this stage, it's amazing. It's it boosts your confidence up, and I think all the girls are feeding off that energy right now. So, thanks, Coach. Best of luck in the second half. All right, thanks very much, Ryan. We're at halftime of the Class A title game here in Omaha. Millard North, the Mustangs, with the goal. Have a once and lead. One, two, one, two, three, four. What do you think about going to college? I'm kind of scared. I feel nervous a little bit. That's kind of a tough one. I'm not really sure yet. I'm excited for college. <laughs> How are you going to pay for it? To be honest, I don't really know. That's actually a really good question. <laughs> um, so what if you had a friend you could ask? The values that Methodists bring is family. It's important going through school that you're not just a number, that you're a face and that you're a name to a teacher. And so I loved the small class sizes. What it means to me is that I found my foundation where I can build on my passion and I can embrace something new in my life. It is a place where I know that I'm supposed to be. The Nebraska Chiropractic Physicians Association is pleased to sponsor the NSAA Academic All-State Award Program, recognizing students and athletes who shine in the classroom and on the field. This statewide program recognizes academic excellence, leadership, and athletic achievement in over 20 high school sports and activities. We honor these exceptional students and all of the teachers, coaches, and parents who have mentored them. Together, we can continue to make Nebraska a great place to live, learn, and play. There's no wedding like a royal wedding, and PBS is the place to see it. Join the Royal Wedding Watch, a week of special programming leading up to the ceremony, with host Meredith Vieira reporting from London. From the dress to the cake, the procession to the honeymoon, we'll cover every detail. Tonight, come to Windsor Castle and meet the bride and groom. The Royal Wedding Watch, tonight at 10 Central on NET. Welcome back to Morrison Stadium in Omaha, Class A Girls State Championship. And at halftime, Miller North leads Omaha Marion 1-0. All right, we've heard so much in the student section from Marion and Miller North tonight. We wanted to give you guys some due credit. So we had the rain leaders from each student section. This is senior Emma Rabi of Omaha Marion and senior Nick Farini of Miller North. So Emma, I'm going to start with you. You have uh, quite the costume out here today. As the rain leader, you have a very important job of getting those girls loud the entire match. You guys doing a good job so far, do you think? Yeah, I mean, we're playing up to our potential, that's for sure. Um, I think we can get even louder. 
we're going to show everyone what we're made of and hype up the team. The Marion girls, you, you guys take that seriously. So tell me the story with this right here. Well, this is our pet horse, Natasha, and she's just there. She's our spirit animal for everything. So she just kind of gives us that extra boost we need. All right, so Nick, you guys don't have a spirit animal. How do you counter with that? Uh, we counter that with this baby right here, the hard hat. It's, uh, it's a tradition that every year a senior uh, wears a hard hat and he leads the student section. So what do you, I heard you guys had one chant, um, just like football. That's not really fair though, right? They don't have a football team. Uh, that's exactly the point. They don't play football. Uh, you know, they're an all-girls school, so it's a bit of uh, cleverness there. But it, I mean, it's really simple. We're the best student section in the state and everybody knows it, so, you know. All right, well, let's find out. Let's find out which student section is louder right now. Nick, can you uh, get the troops ready and Emma? All right, we're gonna see which student section is louder. Miller North, you guys have anything for us? We're gonna go, we're gonna go with Go Big Blue. We're gonna go with Go Big Blue because that's what we are, we're blue. And we're still the best student section in the state. All right, Nick's gonna run over and get their chant going. He, he says they're the best student section in the state and half of them, more than half of them are sitting down. All right, Emma, Emma, Marion. Oh, she's already getting them going. She's getting them fired up. A great atmosphere at Morrison Stadium tonight in Omaha. Miller North leads Omaha Marion one nothing at halftime. You're watching the Girls State Soccer Championship on NET. Since 1981, Food Bank for the Heartland has been working to feed hungry people in Nebraska and Western Iowa, providing nutritious meals through local food pantries, the backpack program, outreach efforts, and more. You can help the Food Bank feed children and families in your own community by making a contribution or volunteering. After all, the best support is locally sourced. More info can be found at foodbankheartland.org. Let's talk about public power for a second. Nebraska's electric utilities use a diverse mix of fuel resources to generate electricity. Wind, water, coal, nuclear, natural gas, solar, and methane. Just another way your electric utility shows how public power works for you. Let's talk about public power for a second. Did you know Nebraska's electric utilities pay more than $100 million to communities they serve each year? Those dollars stay local, helping to empower our hometowns. Just another way your electric utility shows how public power works for you. Participating in Nebraska high school activities has taught me about teamwork. I've learned how to lead among my peers. At my high school, I have set goals and I work hard to accomplish them. I like to run on my cross country team. It makes me feel good about myself. The Nebraska School Activities Association providing opportunities in 25 activities in our 303 high schools. NSAA activities, the other half of education. Teachers, ready, set, text. Let the PBS Kids Series Cyber Chase help you bring math and science resources right into your classroom with Cyber Chase Text to Teacher, a free four-week program that delivers quality educational STEM content straight to your phone once a week. Habitat, that's where animals live. Just text this word to 30644 to sign up and receive your free tips, lessons, and videos. Teachers and Cyber Chase, a winning combination. Let's take a look at the highlights from half number one. As you said, defensive battle early on. Both teams kind of figuring each other out. Had multiple opportunities. This is a great opportunity from Mo Tolley of the Crusaders. Lauren Gunn with a chance. Lady Gunn. And here was the lone goal. Oh no, check that. This is off the crossbar. And here is the lone goal. Good cross by Campbell Simmers. Sena Ahavisi with the goal. Just inside the post. 
And that's where we stand, one sip. Mustangs on top. Here's a look at your statistics in the first half. Anything stand out, Marin? Well, you know, actually, I'm, I'm surprised to see Millard North leading in the shots category, but but the way they've been, I wouldn't have predicted that before the game, but the way they've been playing, they've been very attacking minded in the second half of that first half, and they're bringing it strong. Half time of the Class A title game. One zip, Mustangs on top. One, two, one, two, three, four. What do you think about going to college? I'm kind of scared. I feel nervous a little bit. That's kind of a tough one. I'm not really sure yet. I'm excited for college. <laughs> How are you going to pay for it? To be honest, I don't really know. That's actually a really good question. <laughs> So what if you had a friend you could ask? Not just on the good days. Not just on the challenging ones. Not just during business hours. Or when relaxing. But always. For the past 125 years, Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. Welcome back to Morrison Stadium in Omaha. Halftime of the Class A Girls State Championship. Omaha Marion trails Miller North 1-0. Head coach Teresa DeGeorge of Omaha Marion. What would you say to your girls there? How do you respond in the second half? That we have to just calm down and play our game. We've succumbed to what I didn't want to, which is their long kicks and lack of control and I feel like we fell into that as well so we need to pass get the ball on the ground connect and get some shots off you guys played Miller North about five weeks ago and got up four nothing in that game one four to two how do you replicate some of the same effort from that day well that game Miller North came out flat today I feel like we are um, not as focused at least the first half my hope is that the second half we can come out much more focused and have an energy spike that we really need that game was we played very well so uh, we need to get into that rhythm we haven't gotten into a rhythm yet and that would be very helpful if we could thank you coach best of luck appreciate Teresa to George joining us as second half play is underway here in the class a title game yeah, I'm going to agree with Coach DeGeorge. They really haven't found the rhythm that we're used to seeing from Marion. They usually, you know, really control the pace of the game, move the ball around quite a bit. They just haven't been able to find that tonight. You heard Ryan Mick say these two teams played earlier this year. It was a 4-2 to two win for the Crusaders, but they took a four-zip lead. Miller North came back, scored two late goals, but James... A boy in that game even before both coaches agreed that Miller North just came out very flat kind of as coach of Wegg put it slow and flat Sometimes that's the hardest part about coaching right you do all the preparation you teach them everything get them all lined up how you want them And if they don't really come out the way that you're expecting it can it can change the pace of the game really quickly Conversely in that one Marion and you heard Teresa to George say she thought they played very well in that first game which of said he just didn't think they matched the effort or the energy early on. I thought Marion kind of caught him off guard. And now we're, like you said, we're kind of seeing the opposite of that, yeah. where Marion's a little bit flat. Um, and you know what? Sometimes it's really difficult when you've really pounded a team before. As much as you convince yourself that we've got to be prepared, we've got to be focused, we've got to do these things, in the back of your mind, you kind of have this overconfidence, even though you know you shouldn't. And, and really, on the flip side, for Millard North, I mean, they've got they've got this vengeance to get back for for taking that beating, and and uh, you know, this is the result sometimes that you see. And of course, Millard North lost the last two state championships to Marion. That adds to the Mustang motivation, without question. 
Oh, absolutely. I mean, they are. Yeah. They they know what that feels like. They they've been there. They've they've been on the flip side trying to scrape their way back into it and I think that builds a lot of motivation. I mean, every day at practice throughout the entire season, every day in the off season, you're thinking about that kind of stuff and thinking about what it will feel like when you can get back to that moment. This doesn't look good, so we're gonna have a timeout here. Yeah, hard collision there. Soccer, U.S. soccer referees across the country are taking head injuries a lot more seriously. So anytime there's any sort of head collision, um, referees are, are quick to act to make sure that they're taking care of the health of these players. Yeah, I'd be curious to hear what uh, I'd, I'd be really curious to be a fly on the wall or on the field yeah. with uh, Coach DeGeorge. She's, you know, she's an intense woman. She's she she gets fired up and she comes across very calm and collected. And she is she stays composed, but she's got that fire in her. And she definitely has the ability to motivate and encourage her players to kind of get out of that funk and and see if they can they can find that fire and that bite. Still trying to identify a number for the player. There we go. She just popped up. Reagan Simmers, the junior midfielder, 17 goals on the season. She is their leading scorer in terms of goals and leading point getter as well. Well, and she's really the one that that kind of created and started that that goal that they scored by getting to the wing and, and crossing that ball back. This is going to be a huge loss if she's unable to come back into the game. But I know they're going to have the uh, health professionals check her out and and make sure she's safe if she does return. I believe uh, for Marion, I think Mo Tolly also went off just to be looked at as Kajai Anderson back into the game now for the Crusaders. Yeah, I think that's something that they've they've come to take very seriously. If there's any sort of head collision, they both players need to come off, get get evaluated and looked at. Health of this, the safety of the players is really the most important thing. That's a great turn by Delaney Gunn. And by turning and open up to the field, she can she can see that player find their feet. And it's not quite there, but that's the type of play that that, that, that Marion that the Marion coach coach to George really wants out of her players. That's the style they want to play, where they turn, open up, find feet, move off the ball, carry it down the field like that. But if you look at the shape of the back line of Miller North, I mean they are super organized right now. They're in they're in kind of textbook shape. When, when they're watching, watching Marion move the ball around like that, they're staying compact, staying organized and disciplined, makes it a lot easier to defend as a unit rather than 1v1. So she takes the ball with her with her stomach there, gets a nice tight turn, has time to look up and find feet. That's, that's exactly what you're looking for. That's textbook play right there. That's what makes her a special player. Well, for the latest NSAA soccer championship updates, connect with us on Facebook and Twitter. You can make sure to like NET Sports and Big Red Wrap Up and join in the conversation on our social platforms. Jai Anderson has it. Knocked away. I love what Kajai was trying to do there. She just kept plowing through, and that's the kind of effort it takes when, you, when you're anywhere near in front of the goal. You just got to press, press, press. And some good things will happen. talked about Delaney Gunn earlier. She's an exceptional soccer player, but she's a very, she's a very smart, very smart person. She uh, will be attending St. Louis University. Yeah. Um, and she, she, she's the type of player that really could have 
she could have gone anywhere she wanted to almost. She had lots of opportunities and was happy to choose St. Louis University for, for the academic program that she's going to get there. Studying biology at SLU. She'll do a lot for their soccer team too. Absolutely. We see Miller North kind of on the attack for the first time this half. I mean, they, they've mostly been on the Marion offensive half, and kind of good to see Miller North responding like this. These student chants are really yeah. entertaining. Joined by Mallory Mumby. I think Millard North needs to take it back a little bit of this momentum. They need to win this ball, keep the ball in their attacking half for a little bit. And it's going to swing back real quick like it is right here. Once you get, once you allow Delaney Gunn to turn and face up, she's going to be dangerous. She's going to make things happen. Gunn trying to find Tajai Anderson. Oh, on the field, the Ryan Zimmer CBS an update on the injuries. All right, guys. Well, Reagan is um, sitting on the bench by herself right now. Underwent concussion protocol. The trainers did not want to disclose to me whether or not she will be able to return to the match. But Coach Abweg very concerned as he was watching on uh, for concussion protocol. And I have to say, with her sitting by herself on the bench, signs probably are not great pointing to her return. That is, of course, the leading scorer for the Mustangs, Reagan Simmers. Well, and you can definitely see that there's been a little bit of drop in the offensive output for Millard North. Just losing a player like that, just having her come out for a few minutes. I mean, she's going to affect all types of all types play on all types of the field, everywhere on the field. This is where they're going to need Elwood to do just like that and really create some of this offense, bring some bring some defensive attention to her and open up some opportunities for some others. Good job defensively by Stecker there for the Crusaders. Check that that was Megan Valenzuela. And we talked about that dual threat before the game, and, and now Kelly Elwood really has to kind of put this team on her shoulders and, and lead the way. They've got to stay involved in the attack just to keep them out of their of their defensive end. Keep Marion out of there and they're not going to be able to score. But you certainly can't get conservative and just think you're going to defend the whole time. You have to keep attacking and, and keep the play happening in your attacking end. Good control there by Molly Sarin. Yeah, Molly, a real physical player. She does not have any problem going shoulder to shoulder, and she's a strong young woman. It's hard to take down. Molly will actually be playing at the uh, University of Nebraska at Omaha. Regent Scholarship, how about that? Yeah, like we said, I mean, there's a lot of smart kids yeah. out there tonight. Yeah. Well, you were talking about Delaney Gunn earlier heading to St. Louis University to study biology. She's also valedictorian of the class at That's Marion. impressive. Looking a little more smooth here on this run. 
Yeah, they're definitely finding, starting to really connect those passes that Coach DeGeorge was talking about. Moving the ball all the way across the field, changing that point of attack really stretches out that defense. Aaron Morrissey with a nice tackle here. Yeah, her timing is great. She she just watches that ball, waits for that moment when it gets pushed out in front of her, and then she takes the slide tackle and makes perfect contact with the ball. With a header into the box. Oh, that's a great opportunity there. One touch. Take that all day. Keeping it on frame. Sydney Anderson is staying stalwart in goal. I don't know if she's had to make any truly difficult saves yet tonight, but with the momentum that Marion is creating, I'm guessing she's going to have to soon. Miller North's back line is they're they're staying very strong. They're staying nice and organized. But they're going to have to keep doing that. And back into the game for the Mustangs comes Reagan Zimmers. Well, that's a good sign. Along with Reagan comes Morgan McElnay. See if the Mustangs can get some more offense going up. One zip here. On the goal by the freshman, Sena Ahavisi. Sends that one in. Who's back playing on the back line now. Right. I mean, the versatility of this kid is fantastic. And she's she's been great in the back. I think having Reagan, it, it already looks like she's having an impact again. I mean, she, she just draws people to her. She draws defenders to her, attracts attention, likes the ball at her feet. Zimmers with the throw in. Zimmers heading the ball right after she's gone out to be checked for for concussion. I think she feels okay. I'm really impressed with this freshman. Sana Ahavisi is. Kaja. Go ahead. Well, Kaja Anderson with it there since it in. I mean, she's just playing a, a playing very mature for for a freshman. There's Jordan Marino now in there for the Mustangs. Here's Molly Saran and uh, great tackle there by Millard North. I think we're going to start to see Marion getting even more urgent. I mean, we've, we've seen that intensity level go up this half, um, but the, the more it, the closer it ticks to zero on the clock, we're going to we're going to see that intensity continue to rise. They're going to start to get a little more desperate. And uh, that urgency is, is really going to be very evident. Delaney Gunshot is off there. Student section is doing everything they can to That's help right. their, their Marion team tonight. Campbell Zimmers sends it up. Campbell Zimmers, the sister of Reagan yeah. Zimmers. It's always kind of a, a cool, special experience when you get to, to share a moment like this with, with a sibling.
free kick up coming for the Mustangs. Good call. Yeah, absolutely. Kaija, Kaija Anderson got the late foot in there. Yeah, Riley makes a great move right here, and Kaija takes her feet out. I mean, it's a great, great call by the referee. Pieces haven't really resulted too much in any in any dangerous chances tonight. I know that's something that every every coach works on, but it's just one of those things that some nights it, the execution isn't always isn't quite there. taken a lot of shots but kind of like I said earlier those the shots haven't been the most dangerous opportunities Miller North definitely has created more dangerous opportunities even though maybe not as many in this half at least oh. and that's a great effort by Mary and that's why they that's why you chase that stuff down because you never know what's gonna happen so on this header both the defender is chasing back. Your goalkeeper's coming out, but, you know, goalkeepers drop that sort of thing, and Sydney Anderson was really lucky that uh, she could just pick that ball up real easy. Aaron Morrissey with a nice job shielding there as well. There's Kaija Anderson with it. Has it taken away? Reagan Zimmers with it. This is where Reagan Zimmers wants to be. She likes to be in on those wings with space behind defenders to try to take them on. It doesn't always work out, but that's the position she likes to be in. Beat one defender out there on the wing, draw another to you, and cross it in. Feeney with the free ball in. You see the uh, yeah. There's the uh, shirt pull right there. That's, <laughs> I mean, you know, you can't fault somebody for for trying to to win the ball back, but it's definitely definitely going to be called by the referee. Just kind of lucky she didn't tear the shirt there. There was a header there just a second ago, also by Caitlin Teeley, who there is Caitlin now with the misfire, who took a header and then immediately. Buckled over, official walked over to make sure she was okay, and she waved him away. Continues to play. I don't think she wants to come out of him at this exactly point. Exactly right. I'm just fine. He's, he's doing his duty to try to yeah. make sure she's okay, but I think now she's gonna get yeah. a little breather anyway. Ever leverage now in there for the Mustangs, and there is Feely. Ever leverage, just a freshman. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, don't even talk. Yeah, she wants to get right back in there, but he's probably got some instructions to give her to help, help her finish out this game. Opportunity here. Can Cliver get to it? No, kicked away. Who else? Aha She's she's stalwart back there. Just a wall. Inside 20 minutes to go in the game. Millard North still leading with a one to nothing lead here in Omaha at Morrison Stadium. We have a break in the action. We'll take a break as well. One zip. Millard North on top. Since 1981, 
Food Bank for the Heartland has been working to feed hungry people in Nebraska and Western Iowa, providing nutritious meals through local food pantries, the backpack program, outreach efforts, and more. You can help the Food Bank feed children and families in your own community by making a contribution or volunteering. After all, the best support is locally sourced. More info can be found at foodbankheartland.org. Head trauma and concussion risk minimization is a priority of the NSAA. When in doubt, sit them out. Some common symptoms of concussions are dizziness, confusion, and nausea. The NSAA requires coaches in all sports to take a concussion course annually. For more information regarding concussion management and return to play protocol, visit our website, nsaahome.org. When in doubt, sit them out. Coverage of the 2018 NSAA Girls Soccer Championships on NET is made possible in part by Education Quest, Nebraska Methodist College, Nebraska Public Power District, and Nebraska Soybean Board. A big thank you to all of our sponsors who help us bring you the best high school athletes from across the state. We could not do it without your support. For the third consecutive year, the Class A Girls State Championship comes down to Millard North and Marion. The last two years, the Crusaders have walked away state champs. Just a bit more motivation this year for the Mustangs to end that skid, to end that streak. They lead it here one to nothing. As we are inside 20 minutes to go in this Class A State Championship. It's an exciting feeling to be 20 minutes away from a championship and they I think they know what they have to do. Coach Abweg was talking to them there at the break and motivating them, encouraging them to hold on, keep keep doing what they're doing, keep fighting for every ball. Of course, Coach DeGeorge had her own had her own instructions. She was right. drawing some pictures and trying to give them some tactical tactical realignments, I'm guessing, and try and spark something in, in Marion. So many great statistical numbers to point out when you have two teams that are here this often. Shot on is just high. And that's the kind of buildup that, that Marion's been looking for all night. I mean, you play the ball up, you do a little drop pass, and then you get a good look on goal. And it's not the shot that they that they are hoping to get, but you get a good shot, a good look on goal. And that's what Marion needs to get more of if they're going to have a chance to tie this game up. Mo Tolly was just high. Kaja Anderson chasing after it, but goes up. Talk about so many, you know, interesting numbers when you have two teams who've been in it as frequently as these two. We talked about this being the third consecutive state championship between these two and these two teams have won 10. Check that 20 state titles between them. Every other school in the Class A has won a total of 10. This is also the seventh time in state championship history that these two teams have squared off. They played in three straight in 97, 98, 99. Then they played again in 2014, and 16, 17, 18. Wow. I mean, that's a history going yeah. back. And But it, it doesn't get old. Every game, every year, I mean, it's exciting. There's, it's back and forth. There's, there's great soccer being played. Tolly with it. Now this is the kind of soccer that DeGeorge likes. They get, when they get their heads up and find feet, that's the kind of soccer she wants to see them play. And she knows they're going to get good chances if they can play that controlled, composed soccer where they're finding feet. Nearly a good touch mm -hmm. there for the feet ahead. And Edwards could not quite get it through. Edwards drops it, Tolly. sense it. They want to stay patient and look for it, but they know they also are under this time crunch, so they they kind of feel this 
desperation building up in them. It's, it's a tough balance at this point in the game for Marion because you want to keep playing, you want to go back to your style, play good, clean, pretty soccer, but you've got to, you've also got this desperation side of you kicking in. Throw in by Megan Valenzuela. Now Miller North, they're, they're hanging on. They're doing what they gotta do. Their back line is, is just gonna kind of try to keep getting those balls knocked out and... Stecker chases, long ball up ahead. Smart play, she's just gonna let that, that ball roll out. I'm telling you for a freshman, she plays like a much more experienced older player. Break here for Campbell Zimmers. That's the look they're looking for. They want that ball. They want to find that. Oh, wow. Cut Sydney in. Anderson did not use her hands and pick that ball up. She kicked it away. And then right through the legs of Laurel Edwards, who was trying to drop it for a teammate. That's that's a little bit of her inexperience showing for Sydney. I mean, she, you know, if she if she just picks up this ball or lets it roll out of bounds, yeah. you know, maybe lets your team get set up and, and get reorganized. She's learning, though. She's getting the job done so far. It's just like when you score goals, it's not how, it's how many. And when you save goals, it's not how, it's how many you save. Back in there for the Mustangs is Caitlin Dealey. Here comes Marion again on the attack. They're looking for those diagonal passes into those corners now. Again, they're doing the same thing that Miller North is trying to do. Let's find the, let's get the ball out on the ring, stretch that defense out. Laurel Edwards had the chance. Looked like she was going to get a good shot off there, but great defending again. Good job right on the ball by Mia Suter. They just keep supporting each other. That's what's impressive about this Millard North defense is they keep getting, they recover for each other. They tackle and then they get behind again. And, and it's, it's really quite a, a cool team effort to see. They're not relying on one person to do the job for them. Well, so drops it, put it back in. Stecker fires it in on goal. The battle, I mean, every ball is just a, 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 a battle, and these players are, are going after it, giving their best effort. Tally with a good pass. Here's Suter up the far side, but we got control. I mean, this is this is a game. There's there's 12 minutes left. You're just going to leave everything out here on the field. You don't, you don't, you know, right at this point, you're not feeling any pain. Your your legs are your legs are burning. Your lungs are burning. Everything's physically not at your peak, but mentally, you're just so focused and in tune, and you're just able to dig even deeper. Shooter stays with it, drops it. Get the ball out. 
can tell that Millard North came into this game with a defensive plan. They had four goals scored on them earlier in the season against Marion. So they obviously came in with a different approach. You know, and now they're they're 11 minutes away from having a shutout, having a state championship because of this defensive plan. They're very organized. They're working for each other. Collie sends that through. Good pass from Gunn. Far side. Suter with it. Marion is relentless. They're going to keep attacking those wings. They're going to keep trying to find Delaney Gunn on the diagonal run. They're, 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 they're not going to let up. They have certainly dominated possession here in the second half of play. Chases it up the left side. Certainly most of this game has been played in Marion's offensive half, and Millard North just keeps withstanding the attack. the field to Ryan Mix. Thanks, Larry. Well, we've talked about how great of a crowd it is tonight, and deservedly so, but from a coach's standpoint, it is extremely difficult on the field for the coach to communicate with their players, and that should be noted because Miller North is a much younger team than Omaha Marion. Oftentimes, they have multiple freshmen out on the field. The Mustangs only have four seniors, and Omaha Marion has quite a few more seniors on the roster. So at this point, it's really up to the players. Coaches are not able to communicate very well unless a player is 15 or 20 feet away. So it's all in the players' hands at this point. It is loud on the field, there's no doubt. We can hear it up here. Certainly, this is a sport where most of that preparation is done before the game. You have to teach your players to recognize situations and, and teach them how to make good decisions in, in all those different particular situations that could come up because it, it's a it's a player driven sport. So we've noticed with some of the substitutions um, Marion has moved to a 3 4 3 formation. So they're only playing three in the back trying to push some more offense up top trying to create something. They want to send this game into overtime. So they're they're trying to make some adjustments there. Coach Abweg on the other side has made some adjustments as well, and now he's playing in a 4-5-1 with four defenders, five midfielders, and just the one lone forward up top. And this is exactly what I would expect from, from both coaches. I mean, you're trying to put your team in, in, the, in the best position to hold on for the win or tie it up and, and move this game into overtime. Another throw in here for the Crusaders who have put the pressure on the entire second half but have yet to be able to break through. And inside seven and a half minutes to go now, it becomes crunch time for these Crusaders. Into the box, kicked around. There's a chance. There. Saved by Sidney Anderson. Yeah, and here, here the ball, it's in that dangerous area. It's in the mixer and Delaney Gunn, or Molly, is that Saren. Gun? Molly Saren gets on that and actually puts a danger header on the goal. Sydney Anderson has to come up with a, with a big save for that.
Yeah, I mean, Molly does a great job. She gets power behind her header. She's, she's very technical in using her head, so I'm not surprised she was able to get a good shot off with that. She's, she's the one that it looks like they pushed up. She usually plays in that back line, but they pushed her up more into the midfield to try and create a little bit more offense. Grace Crockett sends it in. And through. And this is exactly what Marion needs to do. They need to keep getting that ball into those dangerous areas. This cross is great. The problem is nobody's in there. Well, I guess somebody was in there. They just couldn't, they just bounced over them. But I, I would keep trying to push those numbers up and keep sending those crosses in. That's, that's the danger area where something will happen if you keep creating chances there. Delayed again, the leading scorer for the Crusaders this year, 21 goals on the year, nine assists. Yeah, she's, she's, she's got it in yep. her. I mean, she knows how to find the net. She knows how to create chances for yeah, others. Had an opportunity there. She was on the run. We've got two defenders back here now for Marion. I mean, five minutes left in the game. You, you've got to, you've got to take chances now. Good stand-up defending there from Ever Loveridge. She's a freshman as well. I mean, Millard North, I mean, these, these freshmen have definitely stepped up and, and done what they needed to, and you've gotten the, you've gotten the experience and, and calmness from Reagan Zimmers and Kelly Elwood, and everybody's playing their part right now. Do an early countdown. Tolly with a good touch right back to her. Tolly with shot is off. Oh, Tolly the juniors had a few good looks tonight. Opportunities. One was just high. Another just missed the crossbar. Yeah, they've had some close calls. Some really good looks at the goal. Good shots. It just hasn't fallen just underneath that bar this night so far. Abby Vaughn has been kind of bored back there this yeah. half. Very much controlled by Marion this half. This is definitely the, the, the type of play that Coach DeGeorge would have wanted to see in the first half from Marion, from her players. You know, I, I think looking back, if, if they can't pull out this and tie it up, she's gonna be she's gonna be disappointed that she didn't get a complete game, and that's what she'll call it. You know, we only played half the game, and it's tough to win when you only play one half. Saren with it. Molly Saren. Valenzuela. And back to her. And now we're under three minutes. This is, Marion's got to really, they've got to really start attacking, even if that means dribbling inside, taking players on. I mean, you've, this desperate style of play has to really start coming out now or you're, or you're not going to get the chances that you want. You want to be calm and composed, but you've got to be willing to really risk it all at this point. And, and, and you're seeing a little bit of that. I mean, now they've got one defender back. They've kind of pushed the, you know, two up and then three. I mean, at times it looks like we've got, you know, three to four defenders up front and that's what you've got to do. Under two minutes to go. 
And Millard North hoping to pull off the upset and knock off Marion for the first time in three years in this game. Two-time defending champion Crusaders hoping to tie it up here with 1.30 to go. Now this is when set pieces become absolutely critical. What have they practiced? What have they prepared for? Fires in. Crosses and it was touched. It'll be a corner kick coming up for the Crusaders. And that's okay. I mean, you, you got something out of it. You get a corner kick, another set piece. This is, I think, the first corner kick yeah. for Marion tonight. I mean, so you take that that quick free kick, get a little header flick off of the Miller North defender and get a corner kick and a chance Fired here. In. Header. Anderson there. Inside a minute to go. They got a great look there. Unlucky that it bounced basically right to Sydney Anderson. She was able to pick that up and get it down the field. And chases it in, can't get there. Cliver. 30 seconds. Now it's Miller North, they just want to connect and get this ball out, and, and Marion's going to do anything they can to get any sort of shot off with 20 seconds left. Here's Tolly. Tolly waiting. Fire That's a good goal. shot. Shot tipped away. Anderson. What a save. Here comes a corner. Less than 10 seconds to go. Can they get it away? Fired in. Shot. Header in the box. Not there. Shot. It's all. Miller North wins the state title. Sydney Anderson with probably the biggest save of her life to hold on to the state championship. Oh man, she did her job. And that's when it counted the most. What an exciting win for Millard North. I mean, she gets the shot she wants. It's a great look. They've pulled everybody back on defense, and she still gets a great shot. Sydney Anderson has to time that perfectly, and basically volleyball sets it over the crossbar. Or that's a game-tying goal right there if she doesn't do that. What a shot by Tolly and a better save by Anderson. Third time is a charm for the Mustangs of Millard North. They've come up empty two previous years against this Marion squad, and that save by the freshman Anderson. I tell you what, she was getting peppered the entire second half. She's a freshman and just stuck with it, stayed persi persistent and relentless, and came up big. And there is the game-winning goal scorer. The freshman for the Mustangs, Sena Ahavisi, put it in. And Mustangs are state champs. One, two, one, two, three, four. What do you think about going to college? I'm kind of scared. I feel nervous a little bit. That's kind of a tough one. I'm not really sure yet. I'm excited for college. <laughs> How are you going to pay for it? To be honest, I don't really know. That's actually a really good question. <laughs> um, so what if you had a friend you could ask? Whether it's spring planting, fall harvesting, or just a drive across the state, Soy Biodiesel helps a diesel-powered engine operate in a demanding job. Soybean oil from Nebraska soybeans makes biodiesel a renewable fuel that's also environmentally responsible. The soybean checkoff plays a major role in supporting the use and availability of biodiesel. The Nebraska Soybean Board, growing opportunity from the ground up. The Nebraska Chiropractic Physicians Association is pleased to sponsor the NSAA Academic All-State Award Program, recognizing students and athletes who shine in the classroom and on the field. This statewide program recognizes academic excellence, leadership, and athletic achievement in over 20 high school sports and activities. We honor these exceptional students and all of the teachers, coaches, and parents who have mentored them. 
Together, we can continue to make Nebraska a great place to live, learn, and play. The channel you're watching now is NET Television. NET Sports brings you all the action from the NSAA Boys State High School Soccer Championships Tuesday, May 15th, live from Creighton University in Omaha. Class B begins at 5 p.m. Central with Class A starting at 7.30 p.m. Central on NET. A live webcast will be available at netnebraska.org and on the NET Nebraska app. Well, there's the celebration for the champs of Millard North. They have been a runner-up two consecutive years, and the third time is a charm. They take home the title here in 2018, and another great season for the Crusaders, who finish at 18-3, and three, and a runners-up in Class A. Time now for medal and trophy presentations, and for that, we go to Ray Quinn. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we direct your attention to midfield for the presentation of the Sportsmanship Award for Girls Class A. Thank you to all schools, students, fans, players, and coaches for their ongoing efforts in this area of sportsmanship at the state soccer championship and throughout the entire soccer season. The trophy is being presented and is provided tonight by Awards Unlimited. The Nebraska Army National Guard is the proud partner of the soccer championship sportsmanship awards. Making the presentation on behalf of the Nebraska National Guard is Staff Sergeant Carmen Ruiz. The Nebraska State Interscholastic Athletic Administrators Association, the Nebraska Coaches Association, and the Nebraska School Activities Association are pleased to announce that this year's Class A Girls Soccer Sportsmanship Award winner is Omaha Marion High School. Congratulations. The Nebraska School Activities Association is honored to have medals and trophies for both of these outstanding teams. Presentations will be made by NSAA Board of Directors, Nolan Beyer from Millard Public Schools, and U.S. Bank Representative, Dolores Turway. Here are the awards for the 2018 Class A runner-up Marion High School. Will head coach Teresa DeGeorge and your assistants please step toward the middle of the field to present the silver medal medals to each member of your team. Players, as your name is called, please come forward to receive your medal. Abby Vaughn. <laughs> Hannah Schaefer. <laughs> Lily Gonzalez. Kaja Anderson. Megan Valenzuela. Chris Bravo. Mia McGrath. Laurel Edwards. Patty Cliver. Delaney Stecker. Jaden Johnson. C.C. Hecker. Mo Tolley. <laughs> Catherine Pelton. Delaney Gunn. Mia Suter. Alexis Christensen. Mally Saren. Oh, 
Mallory Mumby. Grace Thede. Grace Crockett. And Liv Van Bell. And now here's the 2018 NSAA Class A runner-up trophy. Congratulations, Marion High School. Well, congratulations and a great year for the Crusaders of Marion. They have won five of the last nine state championships. They've won for two previous years and this year runner-up in 2018. Time now for the presentation of the championship medals and trophies to the champs from Millard North, the Mustangs. Now to the 2018. To Class A champion, Millard North High School. We'd ask first head coach, James Abwig. We have a special award for you. Now, Coach, would you and your assistants please present the gold medals to members of your championship team? Sydney Anderson. Raja Tassari. Marin Ellis. Moya Murray. Julia Dooley. Campbell Zimmers. Morgan McElnay. Regan Zimmers. Riley McHugh. <laughs> Jordan Marino. Kelly Elwood. Aaron Morrissey. Cena, a hard busy. <laughs> Jocelyn Anderson.
Caitlin Beaverness. Delaney Grant. Eber Loveridge. Laney Kuhn. Caitlin Feely. And Emerson Henry. Presenting the team championship game ball from Farmers Mutual Insurance is Vice President of Agencies, Andy Krause, to head coach, James Aubrey. And now, for these outstanding athletes in their school, here's the 2018 NSAA Class A State Soccer Championship Trophy. Congratulations, Millard North High School. Mustangs of Millard North are state champs in 2018 in Class A. They win it over Marion, a one to nothing. And what an exciting finish. He came down to the final couple of kicks. Great job defensively, and the Mustangs win it. We'll hear from them when we come back at Morrison Stadium in Omaha. Talk about public power for a second. Did you know Nebraska is the only state in the nation served entirely by public power electric utilities? Community-owned utilities mean Nebraskans are working for Nebraskans. Just another way your electric utility shows how public power works for you. Let's talk about public power for a second. Did you know Nebraska's electric utilities are governed by locally elected or appointed boards and councils? This means you have a voice in the decisions made by your local utility. Just another way your electric utility shows how public power works for you. Methodist College is small and the faculty is very involved. I feel that they care about how I'm doing. Nebraska Methodists put clinical work right there with the schoolwork. I knew I was going to be helping patients even during school. Since starting Nebraska Methodist College, I have learned a lot about myself. I love to learn and I want to keep progressing and, and make an impact on patients. Hi, I'm Perry Stoner, inviting you to join the NET Sports Partners Club. With your support, NET brings you hours of sports action year-round. NET is your home for Husker Volleyball, Big Red Wrap-Up, and High School Championships. NET is Nebraska's home for sports, and sports partners like you make it happen. Log on to netnebraska.org and explore the benefits of joining, like tailgate parties and meet and greet events. Take pride in knowing your support puts the action in NET sports. Coverage of the 2018 NSAA Girls Soccer Championships on NET is made possible in part by Education Quest, Nebraska Methodist College, Nebraska Public Power District, and Nebraska Soybean Board. A big thank you to all of our sponsors who help us bring you the best high school athletes from across the state. We could not do it without your support. All right, back at Morrison Stadium in Omaha with the champs. Miller North, they claim their seventh state championship in school history. Head coach James Obleg, this has to feel pretty sweet considering the last two years, Marion knocked you guys off in the finals. Yeah, this this is a great feeling. Um, you know, Marion gave us a heck of a game. They played, I thought they played their best game against us and we played our best game against them. And, you know, I've, I've been talking all week about finishing and we finished. That's what we did tonight, so. 
That was a nail biter there at the end. And I was watching you. You had your hands on your knees and you got a little bit emotional. So take me through what was going through your head at the end when Marion had a couple chances. Uh, you know, when they had uh, they had those couple of chances, you know, Sydney came up with a big save. Um, you know, with that one that kind of floated over, she punched out. Um, you know, I was just getting nervous because sometimes we fall, we, we relax and we give up an easy goal. So, you know, I didn't think we did at that point. I thought we came out with our foot on the gas pedal still. So. Congratulations, coach. Thank you. All right, let's bring in Sydney Anderson, the freshman keeper, and holy cow, biggest save of your life at the yeah, end? Yeah, it really was. Like, I knew that I had to make a big save, and I was like, we're not going into overtime, so I had to make the big save for my team and got the gold in the end. You were pretty composed. I mean, Sena had the goal as a freshman. You had the big save as a freshman. What do you attribute that to? Um, I feel like um, a lot of my life I've been like under pressure in club soccer and stuff and I just knew what to do when the time was right. You guys did not seem very phased or intimidated by Marion at all, even though they had beat you guys the last two state championships, but both of you girls were not even on that team. So was that a game as seventh and eighth graders that you guys were watching the past couple years? Yeah, actually I was. My sister is six years older than me and she actually played at Miller North. So I watched her play Marion too. And I really wanted it for her. I wanted it for me. I wanted it for our team, for the seniors. Well, congratulations, Sydney. All right, let's bring in Sena. Sena Ahovasi with the lone goal of the night. All right, Sena, take me through it. Well. Um, it was a team effort. Um, we knew that we had a score. We had to get this goal. So um, we just worked as a team, and it like all came together to the, for the goal. And you guys still buckled down because that came in the first half. Obviously, Marion had a lot of chances in the second half, but what does that say about your defense to hang tight at the end? Our defense is very strong. We kept our composure. We didn't let up. Like We had to keep going. We couldn't let them get a goal, and we did. So you and Sydney are the heroes, both freshmen. There's six freshmen on the team, only four seniors, so you guys could really be building something here in the future. Yes, yes. it's, it's going to be a journey. All right, Santa, congratulations. Enjoy it tonight. Thank you so much. All right, Miller North, your Class A state champions, the seventh state championship in school history for the Mustangs. They win it one nothing over Marion. We'll be back with more after this. What do you think about going to college? I'm kind of scared. I feel nervous a little bit. That's kind of a tough one. I'm not really sure yet. I'm excited for college. <laughs> How are you going to pay for it? To be honest, I don't really know. That's actually a really good question. <laughs> um, so what if you had a friend you could ask? not just on the good days, not just on the challenging ones, not just during business hours, or when relaxing, but always, for the past 125 years, Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. There's no wedding like a royal wedding, and PBS is the place to see it. Join the Royal Wedding Watch, a week of special programming leading up to the ceremony, with host Meredith Vieira reporting from London. From the dress to the cake, the procession to the honeymoon, we'll cover every detail. Tonight, come to Windsor Castle and meet the bride and groom. The Royal Wedding Watch, tonight at 10 Central on NET. Next time on Backyard Farmer, we'll see some spectacular spring blooming trees that are native to Nebraska. You know spring is here when you see these hardy trees put on a show. We'll also hear some tips keeping your yard equipment from doing some unintentional damage. All that and your gardening questions answered. Be sure to watch Backyard Farmer, Thursdays at 7 Central, 6 Mountain, right here on NET. Miller North, your state champs, and the fans rush the field for the celebration. Mustangs win it one zip and take home the 2018 state championship. Well, if you would like a DVD of today's game from the NSAA Soccer Championships, just call 800-868-1868.
1995 plus shipping and handling, and you can relive all of the excitement from this year's championships for years to come. Aaron, last thoughts? You know, it started out as a great defensive battle and it ended with one of the most exciting last second shots, yeah. almost goal, <laughs> and one of the even better last second save by Sydney Anderson. Very exciting finish. Great finish, and Millard North ends that three years of frustration against Marion. Marion had won it against Millard North the previous two years. Here's what happened already today. Of course, we crowned champions in Class B girls earlier. Elkhorn knocked off Scott, and then just now in Class A, Millard North beat Marion. And oh, by the way, Scott and Marion were both looking for three peats and both coming up short. So Elkhorn and Millard North, the new state champs. Reminder, we're back here tomorrow night. We have Boys State basketball, I'm sorry, Boys State soccer tomorrow night back here at Morrison Stadium right here on NET. So for Marin McCrary, for Ryan Mix, and the entire NET Sports production crew, I'm Larry Putney. Thanks for watching the NSAA Soccer Championships on NET. Good night from Morrison Stadium in Omaha.